All right, welcome to SJHL Weekly. It's the playoff edition. We are getting into our games one and two over the weekend. There's a lot of action on the ice. A lot of goals were scored on one side of the docket uh, for a lot of these uh, eight teams that are still remaining. And we'll get into all that right away. So happy that you can all join us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, wherever you're watching today. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that share button and comment away. We want to hear from you throughout the show. Uh, even if your comments are good, they'll show up on the screen and we'll actually be able to read them on the air. Uh, I might have just sprung that on our guys in the back because I think I forgot to turn that feature on, but they'll work on it. They'll work on it. They're good back there. Uh, but again, the games one and two were this weekend, so we're going to break all that down. And later in the show, we're going to be joined by Humboldt Broncos goaltender Benjamin Motu, uh, who has some big news on his own personal front, but he also had a couple of really good games this past weekend. Plus, we do a little buy it or sell it quiz. I'm not exactly sure what we're calling this at, later on in the show, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you stick around from start to finish today because there's a lot to get into. But first, we got to thank our sponsors. Of course, uh, UPL Canada is our big sponsor. They sponsor all of our broadcasts as well as they are the presenting sponsor of the entire SJHL playoffs. Uh, Borgo, Cantera Seeds, Capital Auto Mall, Chevrolet, Great Western, Nutrient, RBC, Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association, Sask Lotteries, Tourism Saskatchewan, Sask Energy, SGEU, and SGI. So many good sponsors, so many good partners. Uh, they keep the lights on in here, so thanks to all of them. But the, these lights are shining bright so that these guys can make an appearance. Rory and Jamie are with me today. Guys, if the first weekend of the playoffs is in the books, overall thoughts, Rory, I'll start with you. Um, yeah, showing the importance of home ice advantage. Yeah. First takeaway, obviously, all the top seeds, all the home teams go away with a 2 nothing series lead, heading back for game three. When we kind of looked at the standings and we broke down these teams at the Christmas break, right, 15-point uh, separation from four to five, mm -hmm. and we were like, wow, you know, we've never seen a top four separate themselves so much, right? Like mm -hmm. maybe between four and five or six, right? It's, it's usually a little bit closer than that. Yeah. Uh, and then throughout the last latter months of the season, we had top teams playing against each other. Of course, Battleford had a slump. Humboldt had a little bit of a slump at a time. Flynn Flon, of course, at the end. Melville got hot. Weyburn got hot. And I think we went away from that narrative. Mm -hmm. The playoffs are showing that narrative to me. There, I think there is a clear separation between the top four and the bottom four. And it's going to take, you know, a really strong 100% performance from one of those bottom four teams. Not out of the question. It's only two games, right? Yeah. They're going back home now. They can even up this series. But uh, the first two games showed me the separation between mm -hmm. top four and bottom four. And, uh, yeah, we're just looking for a little more from those bottom four teams in order to get back in the series. Jamie? Yeah, you know, I would I would agree with you for the most part, mm -hmm. Rory. I think the underlying numbers, the metrics, and we'll get in, I'll get into those a little bit more when we break down each series. But at least in two of the four series, I think the results went one way, but the metrics show that they were actually really, mm -hmm. really close. Uh, even though, you know, the higher seeds won every game. So I, I, I agree with you for the most part. I think there's, you know, something to be said for the quality that comes when you take your chances and you get the saves you need. Mm -hmm. Those are very basic things to say, but they do separate teams, right? Um, it's a make or miss world we live in. Uh, but that being said, you're right. We go home for the young, lower seeds and we expect it to be a different world, at least in some of the situations. So, but that being said... I love the playoffs. So yeah. much fun. Best time of the year. The weather was nice. What more could you want? Yeah, exactly. And uh, you guys were both in rinks uh, this weekend seeing games, and we'll get to that as we go. But first, uh, let's have a look at our scores from the weekend and start with Friday. Uh, we'll start with Friday's scores to kick it off. Obviously, this is all of the game ones. Uh, Multi-point nights from uh, Lees, Anderson, Hool, and Silvestri uh, pushed Ki uh, Flin Flon to a 4 nothing win over Kindersley in game one. Uh, Melford had a balanced attack in game one. Clay, Clay Sleva had two points. That was the only person with a multi-point game uh, as Melford beat Estevan 5-1. Humboldt with a 6-1 win in game number one, 36 save by Daza Mitchell. Not enough. Uh, not enough for that one. A three-point night by Matthew Van Blaricom. And, uh, uh, sorry, Battlefords uh, took a 4-1 win over the Melville Millionaires. Back-to-back -back MVP Kean Bell with a four-point night in that one. On Saturday, uh, much the same in terms of the results. The scores were a bit different, though, and it, it's going to lead to some questions, I think, in a couple of the series. Uh, in game two, uh, two, Flynn Flon doubled up their efforts from night one and had an 8 nothing win over Kindersley. Uh, Alexi Silvestri had a hat trick, three points from Noah Houle, Anthony Bax, and Jacob Vockler in that one. Uh, the Melford Mustangs took a 7-4 win over Estevan, and Aiden Hutchinson had a hat trick in that one. Ryan Duguay had three points, uh, big nights from them. Humboldt with a 7-4 win in game number two over Weyburn. Uh, 12 Broncos found the score sheet in game number two. Unbelievable performance from them. 
and a, a squeaker, a squeaker in game number two, Battlefords with a 2-1 win. They scored the first two goals of the night. Melville got one back, but wasn't enough uh, as Battlefords took that one. Two to one, and all four of the top seeds now have a two nothing series lead. Let's start with that number one seed, Flynn Flom Bombers versus the number eight Kindersley Clippers. Rory, we'll go with you. Mm -hmm. Twelve goals over two games, all scored by the Flynn Flon in this one. Break this down for me. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The Flynn Flon Bombers. Uh, thanks, Kyle. I saw the, the message the jacket, there about yeah. the jacket. I appreciate it. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, hey, look at Flynn Flon, right? Putting all doubters aside meaningful games for mm -hmm. Flynn Flon. They come out and they do exactly what they had to do. My takeaways from the series are that. Meaningful games, the Whitney Forum, the best defensive team in the SJHL, mm -hmm. Harmon Laser Hume, and special teams. Flynn Flon rolling. But yeah, this is what you expect. And look at game one. They win four nothing, right? And who are the tone setters for game one? Goals by Jacob Bockler, Carter Anderson, Alexei Silvestri, and Justin Lees. So these are their top dogs. And yeah, you know, locked up first place for a month and a half. That's tough to, you know, motivate the guys who are so experienced in championship aspirations. You want to win on every night, but that gets tough throughout a 56 game grind when you have first place locked up for the last 20 games, basically. Uh, but yeah, they get into the playoffs. Harmon Laser Hume, back to back shutouts. I don't know what he's going to finish with at the end of the year, but the way they're playing in front of him. Uh, hey, look, as a humble Broncos broadcaster, I've been playing the Flint Flawn Bombers in the playoffs for the last three playoff years and uh they're the best team inside the house secondary chances are almost non-existent and that's what kindersley's gonna have to do to try and get back in this series you gotta find a way to get that loose puck in front of the net you gotta get eyes or you gotta get a body in front of the eyes of Harmon laser hume but uh yeah flin flon this is what we were looking to see would come back once the games were meaningful and uh two nothing series lead and how about the Whitney Forum, guys? Like, it just, yeah. it, it, the Whitney Forum is there for the Flynn Vaughn Bombers. I know, uh, have we seen the Keith Gruner highlight yet? One of another weird bounce off the wall in game two to put away for a 2 nothing lead. But here's yeah, the Flynn Vaughn Bombers. This is still expect. game one, uh, the yeah. highlights yeah. for game one. And, and like you said, Rory, like, look at the crowd. Uh, they showed up. They yeah. always do in Flynn Vaughn. Unbelievable night there for game one, at least. Um, and I know game two was good. Uh, Jamie, mm -hmm. um, is this a case? I'm going to throw a question at you. Is this a yeah. case? that Flynn Flon came to play, or is this a case that maybe it's just Kindersley is just not, not able to keep up with Flynn Flon? Is this Flynn Flon came out to play and, and overpowered, or is this Kindersley maybe showing colors? I don't know. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think uh, if you look at the rosters, you know, and kudos to Clayton Jardine for building the roster that he did. Yes. Not, not putting anybody down, but this is a much more experienced Flynn Flon team that was clearly prepared for playoff pace, Playoff intensity. I mean, look, you look at game one, period one. Clippers mm. outshot them, mm -hmm. outchanced them. Yeah. Harvin Laser Hume, underrated. Harvin underrated. Laser Hume. He was great. Uh, what, I, what do I always say, guys? I always say if you're going to pitch an upset, and yes, this is a big upset. Uh, I know Clayton Jardine and his guys love their bulletin board material, so take it if you want. But this would be a huge upset if the Clippers can rally yeah. in the series. Let's yeah. just call a spade a spade. Um, <clears throat> if you're 50% on the PK, and 0% on the power play, and you give up 12 goals and score zero, like, like what more do you want us to say? Like, the, well, that's enough. it. You need goaltending. You need special teams. The Clippers couldn't score on the power play. They couldn't stop Flynn Flynn in their power play. Mm -hmm. Simple. Sometimes thing hockey is as simple as that. The Clippers did have good spells of play. They did force some big saves from Harmon Laser Hume. You know, Rory and I, we both talked, interestingly enough, about the Weyburn Humboldt series when they switch goalies, you know, in the middle, uh, you know, from game one to two, uh, Clayton Jardine went from Jamin to Falk, and I think Jamin, you know, if it wasn't for Jamin, the scoring game one could have been a lot worse too. Mm -hmm. He made a lot of good saves, but uh, yeah, hey, Flynn Flaw, they're not number two in Canada, number one in the league for nothing. Yeah, you, and here's the highlights for game two, and if you notice, this is early in the first period, right? Kindersley came out to play in game two, too. They were all over the Flynn Flon Bombers. And here's the Keith Gruner goal. This is the Whitney Forum. Uh, you don't leave uh, the net. I got a couple points here. Kindersley all over the Flynn Flon Bombers to start game two, right? All in their yeah. zone. One transitional play out. Sylvester down the ice. A far wing side shot over the blocker of Falk. one nothing on the first shot of the game. Kindersley then again. Okay, let's shake it off. All over Flynn Flon again. Get a power play, right? Puck gets rimmed around the boards. Uh, again, goalies, you can't leave the net in the Whitney form. Cam Hurdlicka knows that. Josh Cote knows that. Now Logan Falk knows that. You just, just stay in the net. If the puck's going around the wall, you know, let it go up the other side and someone will have to go and get it. Mm -hmm. you, you can't leave. 
And then again, that goal happens, 2 0 Flint Flon. So Kindersley came to play, but the Whitney form just yeah. took it away, it seemed like, yeah, right? 2 0 well, early. It brings me back to, uh, like, you hate to laugh at somebody else's frustration, but uh, obviously we were watching morning skate at the Whitney in the finals last year, Battlefords and Flint Flon, game three, before game three, and Josh Cote, who works as, worked as hard as any SJ goalie has in a long time, maybe ever, uh, the goalie there for Battlefords last year, who was wonderful. Uh, he just trying uh, for like an hour to try to to predict rims in the yeah. and, he, and he just couldn't. He was getting madder and madder. And <laughs> Brady Klamasco was just like, "Don't bother, <laughs> don't bother." So just like stay, just in, stay in the net. <laughs> yeah. So we were like, I thought that was kind of a, a kind of a funny kind of situation. And and eventually he did listen. He just stayed in his net, and it worked out fine, obviously for Josh Cote. But you're right. I always joke that Mike Reagan has some sort of voodoo magic at the Whitney Forum, and it proved it again. But Harm and Laserhume, you know, you look at the score, but two shutouts in two games. Wow. Shutouts in the playoffs are not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, ever, they're not easy ever, but talk about the shutouts. I mean, Cote had three last year, all, all playoffs, so they already got two. Yeah. 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 And one thing, one thing I did point out before this series, when we were talking about the, when we were breaking down the series, I said if Kindersley can find a way to take advantage of the special teams play, uh, and hold off Flynn Flon's special team play, but if they can notch a couple goals on the power play, that's how I think they're going to win games. And it's very clear that 0 for 10 on the power play in two games of the Whitney Forum is not going to cut mm -hmm. it. Uh, and, you know, like you said, Jamie, 50% on the PK as well. So uh, anything else on these on this series before we move on? I'm sure Flynn Flon fans are, are now being like, no, don't give away our secret about the goalies, <laughs> right? But, like, we are here to help everyone, yeah. right? So yeah. Yeah. anyone who's going into Flynn Flon, if it's, yeah. you know, Kindersley going in there for game five or game seven, uh, or next round, you know, just don't leave the net. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we'll, we'll give away the secret. A couple, <laughs> a couple of uh, Flynn Flon fans are checking in on Facebook today. Uh, Derek Reed says the Bombers are just too strong and too fast for the Good. Clippers. Yeah. Connor Brading's checking in. The Bombers are so back. So I mean, they might be back. Yeah. It might just be the case. Uh, let's move on now uh, to the second-ranked Melford Mustangs against the seventh-ranked Estevan Bruins. Nugzi, you were in the building for these two games. Mm -hmm. The two games were 12 to five for Melvo yeah. Melfort combined. Yeah. Um, like I said, the game game one, nobody really stood out necessarily. Clay Sleva had a couple points, but it was a pretty balanced attack from Melfort. Game two is a little bit of a different story. Can you kind of break down these two games yeah. for us? Yeah, and this was a series, and obviously I watched it closely calling the games for, for the Bruins radio. Uh, I thought they were two pretty even hockey games. They really could have gone either way. I think the Bruins, Bruins played pretty good defensive hockey. I know you say look at the scoreboard and you say, hey, like that doesn't look good, 12-5. And it doesn't, but... You know, I think there's a situation here where the Melford Mustangs and James Venn made saves when occasionally Jackson Miller didn't. Mm -hmm. um, just getting in call, got to call a spade a spade. Uh, game two, to me, was very different than game one. Game one, the, the Bruins played great in the first, second, third. They kind of faded. You throw back Keegan Little in, who finished his suspension, uh, you know, from his five-game suspension there and, and played in game two. Um, but the you know the the chances were very even. The Bruins outchanced the Mustangs 17 to 10 over the two games. Neither teams really turned over pucks too much. There wasn't that many great chances. It was actually pretty tight, yep. despite lots of goals going in. Yeah. Uh, and the wild third period was the most playoff it felt uh, there in game two. Uh, but in the end, I mean, Aiden Hutchinson and Clay Sleva and Ryan Duguay, who is stopping that line right now? Anyways, uh, Aiden Hutchinson and Clay Sleva, especially what a combo. Aiden Hutchinson looks as confident and as good as anybody in the league right now. He could be as good, if not better, than Kean Bell right now or you go, or Ilecki <laughs> Silvestri. Like, he's as much a Division One talent to me right now in the league as there is. Um, so, you know, big big fan of those guys. But, uh, Rory, you were trying to say something there. Were you? No, I don't think so. I was just oh, listening to you. I yeah. was going to take away afterwards. But <laughs> yeah, sure. But the thing is, too, I mean, you look at the third period and, and games get tighter and tougher in third periods. I looked down at the uh, sort of the deeper stats. The Melford Mustangs were 65% on mm -hmm. third period D zone faceoffs. Mm. That's a recipe for success, especially in games one, but also game two. The Mustangs were pounding, pounding the Bruins physically. Uh, you know, I talked to Trevor Blevins about that before game two. He said, you know, we're, we're, we try to be a hard team to play against. We try to be heavy, but they took it to heart. Uh, they were they were brutalizing. You know, Zach Burfoot played game one, couldn't play game two. Yeah. He had his injury issues. That's a big loss. Getting Keegan, Keegan Little back was huge, as I said, and I think the Bruins responded well in game two, scored 13 seconds in uh, with, you know, through Cade Kennedy. But, yeah, I mean, the Bruins were beat up, I think, by the Mustangs in games one and two. But that being said, the Mustangs haven't lost a game in regulation since uh, mid-February, I think it is, and 
They just know how to win hockey games. They've won, I think, 10 or 11 out of the last 13 games, something like that. Mm -hmm. So especially at the Northern Lights Palace, you know, I think Jason Tatarnik uh, interviewed him after game two. He wasn't, uh, he, was, he wasn't happy about losing, but I think he understood that his team played pretty good uh, given the circumstance. And um, yeah, so we'll see. Affinity Place has been a real fortress for Estevan the last couple of years. Yeah, big takeaway there is to going back to Affinity Place. So, yeah. you know, I mean, it's 2 nothing. you don't want to be down, yeah. but that's a big building to go back into. At full strength, though, a question for you, maybe both of you, if you want to uh, answer as well. At health, at full strength, mm -hmm. where would you compare the Melford Mustangs to the first place seed Flim Flam Bombers? When Melford's healthy, we just haven't really seen it all mm -hmm. regular season. Yeah. Last, you know, little while, 10-game winning streak into the playoffs. Where, where are they, you think, well, in comparison? You, you, I mean, it's funny that you mentioned that, right? I was thinking about this exact question. Yeah. Uh, like, you have, say, you take Flynn Flon's biggest guys. You have Justin Lees, you have Carter Anderson, you have Jacob Vockler, you have Alexi Silvestri. Mm -hmm. We'll take those four, No we'll hole at the point. No hole at yeah, the point. Yeah. And then you throw, you know, Clay Sleva, Aiden Hutchinson, you know, Zach Summers, Ryan Duguay, and then Leith Olofsson and Chase Freetmore. Yeah. So you say, like, those are the, the biggest game changers yep. on those two teams. You flip a coin. Yeah, I, yeah. I really think right? you flip a coin. And right? even in and net. And Venom, even in net. Yeah. You yeah. flip a coin. Like, yeah. if there's a Melford Flynn Flon final right now, uh, crazy. Let's look at the highlight of the week, by the way. Yeah. I talked about Aiden Hutchinson being a beauty. I don't know if I'm stealing your job by saying that. That's okay. That, but... <laughs> don't worry about it. Sorry, I've done it, too. <laughs> I've, I've done it, too. Uh, I but Aiden feel Hutchinson <laughs> yeah, was, was next level these two games. Like, he yeah. was ridiculous. Let's, uh, so let's, let's go to that now. This is a uh, Aiden Hutchinson with his best yeah. impression of he could go all the way. Go for it now, guys. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, Aiden Hutchinson should have shades of, of Chance Petrua kind of doing whatever whatever he wanted on that shift. Not the greatest defensive effort maybe by the Bruins, but he kind of went one on the world and far down ski on Jackson Miller. Good luck stopping that. Yeah, I mean, when you beat a guy, you beat a guy, and Aiden Hutchinson beat like four guys there. So. You're, you're kind of all watching him, by, like you said. Yeah. Like, like it seemed like they're all amazed. But, yeah. I mean, hey, we've all been amazed. By Aiden Hutchinson. He, he started right? in the corner to the back right yeah. of James Van. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did a lap and scored. I Quite was like, literally all but it, the but, way. But the key thing about that goal, too, I think about is, is uh, I forget who it was. I think it might have been Felix Allard. was trying to reach in, and he kind of like did the toe drag, pull around a large stick, and snap it far down in mm -hmm. the flash, flash of an eye. Yeah. Yeah. So like live, it was quite breathtaking. Yeah. I, I was I was like, wow. What Five points in two games for him, yeah. Yeah, really, and really it wasn't just Four points. goals, too. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, you have to be good to put up points, but like he was controlling the pace. The puck was on his stick. He was creating. You know, Clay Sleva was out there banging and making things space mm -hmm. for him, too. So it's a great combo. Best Zach Summers I've seen in a while, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's always good to see. And Chase Freemore was able to unleash a couple of timers. Scored one, one, one of them shot. on the power play. If you were allowing Chase Freemore to take <laughs> one timers, you're asking for big trouble. Yeah. But as I said, I, all that being said, I still think the Bruins played pretty good, and it was a pretty even couple games in my. Opinion. You need to stop that pass across. Yeah. Like you need, they work it on top of the umbrella yeah. and across to Chase Free. You need to, you need to close that off. Yeah. Because it's the best one timer May, in the league. Force them to beat you some other way. Yeah, exactly. Because that's yeah. choice one. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So that uh, series sits at two nothing. This next series also sits at two nothing. Roy, we're coming back to you. Mm -hmm. The number three humble Broncos against the number six Wayburn Red Wings. 13 to 5. No team scored more goals in two games than the Humboldt Broncos uh, this weekend. So, Rory, break down the two games for me uh, between these two teams. Well, there you go. That's my first note. Offense has been dialed in, especially yeah. their opportunistic offense, right? Mm -hmm. Wayburn had good chances in both games. Outshot them in the second game. Yeah. Uh, ben Motu was there to make the saves when needed, but the Broncos were just opportunistic. Timely scoring after Wayburn gets goals and then really capitalizing on a high percentage of their high-grade scoring opportunities. And I love to see that the secondary scoring is what drove uh, the boat for the Broncos in game one. Their top line has gone like 15 games with at least one of them getting a point. In game one, none of them had a point. Not Bryson, not Newins, not Bell, but it was Matthew Van Blaircom, it was Boris Kaufman, it was Ben Costantino, Pat Lanthier, Maddox Amaral, right? These guys stepped up, put on six on Weyburn, and that's really what you love to see for a team with championship aspirations. When one line is really good, but doesn't produce, who's going to pick up that slack? And other guys were. Weyburn on the other side, they were immensely better in game two. I would argue for probably 30 minutes of the game, they were the better team. Humboldt better in the first period. Uh, then I don't know if they thought they were superstars after you know leading Weyburn 9-1, but they went completely away from their game, and Weyburn started to pour it on. 
right? Big thanks to Ben Motu back there as well, says the team, as, uh, you know, he kind of held the Broncos in the lead for the game. But, yeah, Weyburn, you know, they found a way to kind of get to the front of the net, create their chances when Humboldt was away from their defensive side of the game. Here you see Matthew Van Blaircom, you know, like that shot's on and off his stick. Mitchell plays it perfectly, but that puck can go one spot to score, and he puts it there, and that's why the Broncos are winning this series. They're just capitalizing on their chances. Uh, and then, yeah, we talked about two things for the Weyburn Red Wings, working well going into the playoffs. Special teams and goaltending, right? Their power play was awesome. Their PK was awesome. And both Daza Mitchell and Angela Zoll were awesome going into playoffs. But what's been their Achilles heel in game one and two? Special teams, mainly their power play, uh, Ofer, mm -hmm. and their goaltending, right? Mitchell, six goals allowed, although he, I wouldn't say it was his fault in game one. Uh, and then, you know, they go with Zoll in game two. He allows four goals on 14 shots. They pull Zoll out of the net. They put Mitchell back in. He allows uh, a goal on his first shot face there in game two. So I am a little worried about the confidence now of both goaltenders after doing that switcheroo back and forth. Hey, look, I'm not in the dressing room. I don't know if they told both goaltenders going into them, like Mitchell's going to get game one. Zoll, you're going to get game two. It's kind of how it was going down the stretch. But uh, yeah, you know. I don't think it's good for the confidence mm -hmm. to be changing and then pulling one and going back in. But uh, look, like they're both great goaltenders. So when they go back down to Crescent Point Place where they have the first place power play in the league and Daza and Zola play out of their mind, uh, again, yeah. this is a series I can see that gets evened up for the, road or for the, for the home team once Weyburn's home. Yeah, and I should say too, I mean, uh, we'll get to go through these highlights for a game too. Like it was 6-2 to two, uh, Humboldt in the third period and the Weyburn Red Wings did not give up. Nope. Just like when it was, uh, I didn't mention really, in the, in the Melford Estevan games, it was 5-1 Melford. Uh, in the third period in game two, and the SMN mm. Bruins cut it within and, two to you know, rally as well. Back so. to that too, a big night from Alexander Papasparopoulos. Yeah. He had four points in that second game. Yeah, so. yeah he was wonderful the whole the whole two. But that's, both games. We're already, we're already done talking about, about that series. But yeah, I mean, so a couple of things. back to the A couple of things, <laughs> things you said, Rory. I mean, you think back to the moves that Scott Barney did. He didn't make a ton of moves, but what he did do was he brought in Boris Kaufman and Jacob Stritzi, and you talked about the pressure that was maybe on Bell and Bryson and. Um, you know, new ones to be the creators productive wise up front. You know, same thing, you know, I think uh, Weyburn was looking for that and got Matt Hodson, you know, around the trade deadline too. But uh, what I saw from, what I saw from, uh, you know, Stritzy and Kaufman specifically, two Kaufman. guys that were, uh, you know, obviously from the OJHL, it's a different style of hockey and whatever, growing into the, the style of hockey here in the SJ and obviously gets ratcheted up in the playoffs is both those guys were getting into the home plate area, taking their punishment, taking their licks from Weyburn defensemen and, and creating chances. And, you know, Boris Kaufman scored a goal where he just kind of muscled the guy. Um, so that's, I'm sure that's really good to see for the, the humble Broncos as well, just to allow a little bit of depth to those three veteran power forwards at the top. Um, but yeah, Elvar Peterson Arena is a tough place to go, but so is Crescent Point Place. Yeah, and, and Oakley McIlwain was the other one they brought in. And right. I don't think he's getting enough praise. He's a big, mean defenseman who is so good in his own zone along with Ben Costantino. That's a 6'4 and a 6'3 defenseman yeah. on a pairing, right? Yeah. Uh, and he played 14 games for Grand Prairie, right, in the regular season. Four assists, no goals, before being acquired by the Broncos. 23 games in the regular season for Humboldt. Five assists, no goals. Uh, and then Weyburn goes up 1-0 in game two. And McIlwain scores the game tying goal. So you can just know that he felt awesome yeah. getting his first career junior A goal. And, it, you know, if he would have went 150 games for Humboldt before scoring that big of a goal, I think okay. they would be fine with it because it was huge. Sure. It, was, it was, you know, the momentum changer. And, but he's just so good in his own zone and now come out and get his first career uh, junior A goal. I thought that had to be mentioned. Yeah, he's... He's not on the Broncos to score, though. So. Yeah. Well, no. So, but, but now yeah. watch him go off. <laughs> yeah. Watch him but go off. But that's the way now. the playoffs are, right? Yeah. I mean, the guy that, like, you know, Teasdale and Kovacs are going to do everything they can to try to shut down Bryson and Bell and whatever. But somebody else has got to step up because those two guys are good. Uh, and uh, that's what happened in these two games for Humboldt. So yeah. Kudos to the Broncos. Let's uh, let's move on now to our final series here, the number four Battleford's North Stars against the number five Melville Millionaires. These games were a lot closer than the other three series, I believe. Um, Nugsy, we're going to go back to you here. Just a 6-2 mm -hmm. total score over the two games for Battleford's. Yeah. Uh, again, much tighter than the other two, three series. Uh, Key and Bell had a big game one. Let's, let's just break it down. What, what did you see about what, and, what did you and, see in these games? And, to, and to, to, to add on to what you were just saying there, uh, two of those six were empty netters. So yeah. really it was four Very to close. two uh, for Battlefords in these two games. And in, if you think about it again, you look at the metrics, uh, the chances, the good chances of the two games, Melville had outchanced them 20 to 12. Uh, and I didn't see, and I'm sure you guys didn't see, Logan Cunningham 
playing this well for Battleford Zinnet. I spoke a little bit to Key and Bell, trying to book them for Thursday, uh, the Insider Show. No, some spoilers there anyway. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. But uh, Logan Cunningham was great the last couple games in the regular season two for Battleford. So obviously, he's only 18. Usually, you think about SJ goalies, you go in 19 or 20 year yep. old. But, uh, you know, Logan Cunningham, even though he has that Western Hockey League experience, not extremely positive Western Hockey League experience, I should add, with a kind of bottom feeder Edmonton Oil Kings team. But that being said, 18-year-old uh, came in, and as I said, what Melville outchanced them in those kind of home plate, high ex expected goal chances, 20 to 12 over the two games, 10-7 in game two, uh, and so, you know, better than that in game one. Um, and that being said, I did wonder, and I think I said this in the preview, are there enough dynamic offensive pieces on this Melville Millionaires team? We know they're good. We know they can shut down a team. We know they can play systems. You know, they got some really good character players. Adding Bradley Binock will help, et cetera, et cetera. But they got two goals from Luke Beadle, and they got zero from everybody else. Yep. And that's no way to live your life. Uh, and again, I wondered if there was enough of that dynamic offense. And in games one and two, there wasn't. And that being said, Rory, we were there at the CN Community Center for that game of the month not too long ago. It was bumping in yeah. Alville. So I expect it to be another world on Tuesday. I love how we talked about, you know, three, uh, you know, all four series now. And uh, we've always given credit to the building that the <laughs> underdog team is going to go into game three or game four. Yeah. And I know we have a question coming up about that on the quiz. Yeah. So stay tuned for the third Teaser. segment. Uh, yeah. Because that's going to be fun. <laughs> To me, yeah, absolutely the closest series, right? These two teams. Yeah. Both goaltenders, uh, unreal. Both games could have gone either way. Yeah, both games could have gone either way. William Dyke was great. Logan Cunningham was, you know, maybe just a bit better. Uh, again, at Melville, we talked about it. Fifth place team, they're playing so good, but it's, it's weird because their special teams don't reflect that. No. And, you know, if they would have gotten one or two more power play goals, they were one for 11, 9%, right? Just not good enough. They could have won one of these games. Their PK as well, 66.7%. Allowed two goals on only six times shorthanded. Uh, so they got more power play opportunities, just didn't capitalize on them. But experience is the other thing for the Battlefords North Stars. Mm -hmm. Experience is being crucial right now. Not enough, you know, secondary opportunities in scoring for Melville, but that could be really in charge of loading Logan Cunningham, just shutting them all down. Uh, again, and a praise for Luke Beadall. I think, you know, if he's with Melville... For the years to come, an 05 birth year, I think when cool. we do our, our season preview show, that either me or Nugsy or you, Clark, are going to be picking him. Who's going to lead the league in scoring? Luke Beadall might be a, a favorite of a choice come two or three years down the road. He's so good. Well, goals, yeah. Yeah, in goals, yeah. He goals. does score. He scores goals. He doesn't miss chances when he gets them. Yeah. Also, I should say, uh, you know, in this game, I guess it'll be later, so spoiler alert, but the Mills did tie it up, they thought. And there was a goal called off. With yes, that stick, was mentioned so. in the Facebook comments as well, uh, yeah. actually. So, Melville so got was, both It was the right back, call, though, I, I'm said pretty Kirk sure. Peekman. Yeah. So Kirk Peekman knew about it. Yeah, I think uh, I think it was the right call. But that it was anyways, a no goal? That it was a no yeah. goal, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but that being said, still, like, the, the, the Stars needed one goal. They're, the, a bounce to go their way is my point. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I'll say about this series, again, talking to Key and Bell about it and watching a bit of it, like, um, we, you know, we, we, we talk about the Mills trying to generate good scoring chances and finish them. Uh, also, the Battle for North Stars, what have we been saying lately? They need to play better defensively mm -hmm. as a team. I, they, they were wonderful defensively in these two games. They really kept things to the outside. They let Logan Cunningham see it. Their D were harder on sticks, harder on pucks in the blue paint area. All these little things, details we were talking about that the Stars had kind of, there's the no goal yep. there. Yeah, um, at the high that, stick. Uh, yep. it, you know, you, the, there was a little bit of... Uh, complaining there from the mills, but nothing crazy. Um, and you know, in the end, you got to give credit to the stars. You know, yeah. that experience. They found a way to buckle down and play defense. These two games, pucks weren't flying in. Maybe we we're used to for Battlefords, but you know, often when you play defense, you cheat a little bit less for offense. Um, and you know, sometimes your goals will go down too. Yeah. So that's kind of what I thought. Stars will find a way to win. Last year, they found ways to win pretty and ugly all year long. Uh, and so there's no reason to doubt Braden Clamasco and Gary Childerhose can coach winning because that's all they did in the playoffs last year so they've done it quite a bit and I, I will say and I'll continue to point this out all playoffs long special teams is always my x factor mm. Melville was 0 for 7 on the yeah. power play in game two yeah, they had a rough year and that is in a 2-1 game so again uh special teams you don't always get those opportunities in the playoffs because playoffs <laughs> is a lot tighter uh, they don't call as many uh plays but it's a lot tighter so when you do get those opportunities they are important 0 for 7 well, it's, kind of, it's also kind of funny, the, the, uh, the two teams with the highest amount of PIMs going into the playoffs, 
are the two teams with the lowest amount of pims after games one and two. Oh. <laughs> I mean, there was a real, there was a real punch up in game that, two. That, that's true. Yeah. That, that's true. Yeah. 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 The punch up at the Peterson, they call it. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, before we get to the, uh, our news and notes segment, let's go through these teams. Now, I'm going to go Rory, Nugsy, Rory, Nugsy here. Kindersley first, Rory. Pick one thing that if these teams are going to get back into these series, one thing that needs to happen for Kindersley to start. Um, yeah, I mean, the obvious one, I would say, you know, power play, but I'm sure that could be said for any of these losing yeah. teams. you got to get the power play working. So I'm going to say, you know, I've seen Flynn Flon play in the Whitney Forum. I've seen them play away from the Whitney Forum in playoffs hockey. You can't get to the house. Mm -hmm. you got to get to the house on the Flynn Flon Bombers. Mm -hmm. You're going to take a beating to get there. Uh, you know, maybe you draw an extra penalty that way. But secondary opportunities are so hard to come by in front of Harmon Laser Hume. You need to make his night and their defensemen's in front of the house night miserable. Get in there because it's it's... The hardest team to do it against. I know easier said than done, but that's where that's where you're going to get the goals against Flint yeah. Flon. You're not going to score perimeter stuff on them. Mm -hmm. You're not. Jamie, so in, in the house. Yeah. That's good. That's a good one. Jamie Estevan, what do they need to do to get back into this series? One thing. Only play, one thing, play, Jamie. Play, play like you did in game two. Yeah. I mean, make, yeah. a, make, make a few more saves. Yeah. And I don't want to call a kid out too much, but make a few more saves. And, like, I guess I said, Jason Turnick was not upset, really, after game two. Like, they played well. They got Keegan Little back. So, just replicate that. Replicate that and get a bounce. There was, there was not many bounces Estevan's way either. So, yeah, um, yeah just, just be confident. Don't, be, don't, don't panic and get a bounce. Yeah. Rory, the Wayburn Red Wings. This one, I'll use special team, right? Yeah. 0 for 8 on the power play. Uh, Broncos PK was not great going into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going back home now where they have the best power play at home, the Weyburn Red Wings. You need to find a way to break through on the man advantage when you get your opportunities because Humboldt is scoring too often, scoring too timely. Uh, you know, the depth there is in favor of the Broncos, so what can you counter depth with? Uh, power play, special teams, goaltending. So power yeah. play for Weyburn needs to get going. Finally, Melville Millionaires, Nugsy, what do they need to do? Yeah, same thing. I mean, special teams, again, for Melville. Battlefords will get their chances on the power play, and they'll score on them. Uh, you know, they are wily. They are veteran. They find ways to draw penalties to Battlefords. They know what they're doing. The dark arts, as some people call it. <laughs> uh, they know what they're doing, and they take advantage of it. Uh, Melville, you've got you to gotta find a way to score when you get a power play chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because they have not been able to do it consistently this season. Um, but now's the time. Yeah, now's the time. And now's the time in this show for Nugs and Notes. Yeah. So, Jamie, I'm throwing it right back to you for Nugs and Notes. Yeah. I kept piling Nugs and Notes all week long, so I apologize. It's I'll try to be quick. Me and Rory are actually going to have a nap. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll, I'll try to be quick. I'm very sorry. <laughs> okay. And uh, if Benjamin Motu is watching because he's our guest in the next segment, he can enjoy, also have a nap. Enjoy Nugs and Notes, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to ask you to take notes and have a quiz later for you, Ooh. Ben. I'm just kidding. He's joking. I'm joking. Sort of. Maybe? Maybe. Maybe. No, I'm kidding. Uh, okay. The <laughs> NCAA Division I men's tournament bracket is set. Uh, Donnie Hua Vilna, former Flynn Flon Bomber in the University of Maine, will take on Cornell. Caleb Moretz and Xavier LaPlante with the RIT, also former Flynn Flon Bombers. They'll take on number two, a Boston University on Thursday, the second ever RIT, appearance for RIT in the, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, man, Caleb Moretz, what a good player he yeah. was in the SJ. Uh, Justin Close in the University of Minnesota, the Kindersley kid, they'll face Nebraska Omaha. Uh, and Dawson Smith in Western Michigan, the former LaRange Ice Wolves goalie, they'll take on Michigan State. So big task for Western Michigan, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that should be fun. Love to watch the SJ alums uh, when they go off and play college hockey. Uh, Red Deer Polly wins the second consecutive uh, championship in the ACAC. I kind of call Red Deer Polly SJHL University because mm -hmm. uh, tons of kids go there. In fact, 16 SJHL alumni wow. are on their roster, and ex-Battleford's North Star Jackson Steele. Uh, one, they scored the winner in double overtime over uh, Concordia of Edmonton in the championship game there. So uh, very, very cool for them. Uh, in Sask U18 boys hockey, the Saskatoon Blazers are up 2 nothing in the finals over the Regina Pats Canadians. That's a real power matchup. Humboldt's own Cohen Harris uh, scored the overtime winner yesterday in Regina at the Cooperators for the Blazers. Um, you know, Harris and uh, Boyker, obviously Humboldt kids on... Uh, on the Blazers, and I'm wondering if, uh, you know, if some reason the Blazers season ends, if we ever see Dane Boyker in a humble Broncos jersey, but that's a topic for another time. Uh, mm -hmm. In the U18 girls' side, got to mention the Regina Rebels are up one nothing on Notre Dame. Nobody expected Notre Dame. Uh, I did. Remember, I called there. it. I called you, it. You are yeah. lying right now, but Before that's okay. The, season the Saskatoon started. Stars uh, were upset by Notre Dame to get there, but it is one nothing. 
Princeton commit Brooklyn Immigers has been wonderful. Rory and I called her play at the showcase a couple of years ago in the summer. And uh, Team Canada's U18 zone strikers a blocky commit to Northeastern. 10 points in three games in the playoffs for her. Uh, two couple commits to mention. Uh, Riley Giroux to the College mm -hmm. of Saint Scholastica in Duluth, D3 NCAA. Uh, he played uh, college baseball, and now he's going to play college hockey, so that's kind of cool. My two, boy. Two, multiple sports there, and a catcher, uh, and he's built like a catcher. Yeah. Um, anyways, Toughest player on the field, the yeah, catchers. Yeah, he's a tough guy. And then Chase Visser, of course, of the Nippon Hawks to the University of Jamestown, uh, ACHA. And uh, if we could get the community ambassador graphic. Oh, please. There you go. The award finalists go to sjhl.ca to vote. The, the contestants are... Drum roll, please. There you go. Do, 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 do. Joey Lees for Flynn Flon, local boy, obviously. Keegan Little from Weimark, Saskatchewan, uh, the captain of the Estevan Bruins. Jacob Cazette, local boy, up to LaRange from Air Range, and, and Leith Olofsson uh, also there uh, for the Melfort Mustangs. So you can vote. Uh, go to April the 14th, and we'll bug you uh, between now and then to keep <laughs> voting uh, for the RBC Community Ambassador finalists. I'm going to take a drink of water, uh, and you guys can uh, well take over because that <laughs> well was done, Jamie. Notes. Do catchers have knee problems? It just like when Probably. they get older, it seems like it's a yeah, like yeah. it would be bad for the knee. I wasn't a catcher, but I had knee problems too. Oh, okay. This is yeah. just a baseball thing. <laughs> I think it's a baseball thing. Yeah. Uh, when we come back from our break here, we are gonna be joined by humble Broncos goaltender Benjamin Motu. Very excited for that. So stick around for after these messages. It's the 2023 model clear out at Capital GMC. Drum roll, please. Zero percent financing is back. For a limited time, finance rates are as low as 0% on select new 2023 GMC Sierras. CapitalGMC.ca Connecting with customers can be tough, but it doesn't have to be. At Direct West, we have the marketing tools and expertise to help introduce your business to the masses and help it grow. Connect with more customers. Direct West. As a student, things can pile up fast. Ouch. But the RBC Student Banking Bundle makes back to school easier with up to $275 in value. That's a whole pile of takeout. Enjoying what's around you. That's what it's all about. Farm to table, in season, locally foraged, look out the window and that's exactly what you'll see on your plate. It's the kind of experience that you'll compare everything else to for years to come. And it's so close, you can almost taste it. Indulge in our unlimited lakes and parkland. Saskatchewan. Today, online bullying is more common than ever, but there is help. Sastel wants to solve this problem. It's why they created Be Kind Online. If you're a victim of online bullying or know someone who is, or even if you just want to stop it from happening to anyone, this is a place to learn what you can do. You can find lots of tools and tips to help you stand up to cyberbullying. Be Kind Online is a place to learn how to stay safe as well, to learn best practices and plans to stop cyberbullying before it even has a chance. Original 16. Celebrate things done well. Sask Energy Network members are the best choice for natural gas solutions for your home or business. With comprehensive services like heating equipment maintenance, appliance installation, and in-store financing, they have natural gas solutions that go beyond heating to bring you the comfort, efficiency, and reliability of natural gas, both indoors and outdoors, all year long. 
For whole home natural gas solutions, network members burn brighter. All right, welcome back to SJHL Weekly. We are heading out on the video chat line now to be joined by humble Broncos goaltender Benjamin Motu. Benjamin, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Yeah, of course, no problem. I'm doing great. How are you guys? Oh, I think we're all doing pretty snazzy, pretty snazzy. Uh, let's start off with the weekend here. Just as an overview from your perspective from the crease, how do you felt games one and two went? I think they went awesome. Honestly, I don't think they could have gone any better. I think going into waiver and up 2-0, I think it's great for us. And I think uh, we'll be able to close it out in these next two games for sure. Yeah, Ben, uh, always appreciate your time. You know, I've got to ask you, I know goalies love to watch NHL goalies and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when they're growing up, I think maybe more than any other position, they're always trying to steal things from goalies. So who is the guy for you, either growing up or now that you watch in the NHL, that you're like, I'm like that guy, I'm going to try to steal as much as possible. And what are those things that you steal from him? Yeah, I think growing up, I, um, I watched a lot of Ben Bishop and a lot of Jonathan Quick. Two pretty different goalies, but... Um, I tried to take sort of the athleticism from Jonathan Quick and then just, now I'm not the biggest guy, but I tried to take sort of positioning from Ben Bishop. I thought he was a really good goalie um, a few years ago. Hey ben, can you take us into the Humboldt Broncos kind of dressing room right now? You know, you got your leaders. Yeah. You got your guys that have been into the playoffs before. You, you got being, your broadcaster. You being one of them. You got me. You know, I'm not often in the yeah. dressing room, but. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, but it's also the second youngest team in the SJHL and now the youngest in the playoffs, right? Yeah. Uh, Where's the belief kind of with this group that, hey, well, we don't care about our age. Uh, we got the guys that can lead us to a championship. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. I think um, for us, age doesn't matter. And I know it's the same way with Barnes. Like, he doesn't care how old you are. If if you're playing good, he's going to play you. I think that's how he's always been. And I think that that really goes and shows into our room. I think all the guys trust each other and have confidence in, in, one, of, in one another. And we treat each other all the same. Not 20s don't treat 19s or 18s or 17s differently. We all try to treat each other the same. And I think that sort of plays a big role into our chemistry and why we've been able to gel so good as a team this year. How do you lead? You know, you are one of the veterans, one of the leaders on the team, but yeah. also a goalie, right? So you got to get into your mind, you know, prior to the game. You might not be as much of a vocal leader, say, you know, as Cage Newins, but uh, back into the dressing room, you know, do you try to be a vocal leader? Uh, do you try to, you know, be example? Like, because uh, you are one of the guys that, you know, ha has this experience. Yeah, I think for sure. I think I'll try to sort of stay in my lane to, unless I think unless like, I need to say something like going into the games. I'm not not a big talker, but saying the intermission, I think that because obviously I can see the whole ice and I know I know what's going on always out there and say I see something. I'll I'll mention it to the guys and tell them if I see something, maybe what I think what they could do out there and then sometimes it works and then and then they trust me so i think it's sort of just like um using my voice when i need to but then also knowing when um to sort of stay quiet and stay in my lane almost uh benjamin you came into the season uh you know as kind of the bona fide starter for the humble broncos especially after your playoff run last year and you got 40 mm -hmm. games you got one of the bigger workloads across the regular season this year was that something that helped you get ready for the playoffs did you prefer having a heavier workload this year how did that go for you yeah, for sure. Unless I would play every game if I could. Obviously, like I love, I love playing. Um, but yeah, I think definitely playing, playing almost every game every night. I think definitely helped going into the playoffs because it's game after game after game, and you don't you don't get time off. Like we'll have games, and then mostly for the playoffs, we're not really going to get days off. We'll practice practice every day. So I think just being able to have that workload in season is good to help during playoffs because I know. I know my body and I know what, what I'm able to do throughout every night. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, I watched that uh, series with you guys in Flint Flon really closely last year. And um, yeah, like obviously with what happened in the first round, we don't have to go into it, mm -hmm. but it kind of put you in a situation where it was yeah. kind of a sink or swim type of a situation. How beneficial was your playoff experience last year, you know, knowing all of a sudden due to circumstances out of kind of your control, like, it is on you now. So how much did that help you? Yeah, obviously it's something you never want to hear. You never want something like that to happen. But I think um, going into that, like you said, it's sink or swim. So I think I tried to sort of make the most of it and do all I could for the team. And we ended up losing the series. But 
I think that um, overall, I think we played we played a good series, and um, I think it definitely helped out, especially this year going into the playoffs. I think uh, knowing what what teams are like in playoff come playoff time, there's a lot more traffic, a lot more battling. Maybe you get hit a couple more times in front of the net. So I think it's just stuff like that. Knowing knowing tendencies of teams in playoffs, definitely. I think getting those games in last year, like playing seven playoff games last year, is a big help going into this year just because of the experience. Uh, and, you know, and if people don't know kind of your story and, and journey into the SJHL, do you feel that uh, you were ready because of the mental fortitude that you have established on how you broke into the SJHL? You know, you got called into camp. Uh, you started your rookie mm -hmm. year as kind of a third stringer, eventually moved into second stringer. Then it was like a one-two tandem, right? And now starter. So, you know, do is there something that I don't know about that started even before that that allowed you to have that mental drive knowing I don't care who's in front of me, I'm going to play my best to try and get ahead of them. And then it obviously has set you up for success this year and then with your commitment. Yeah, I think like even like you said, even before like I came to the SJHL, I was always, every team I went to before, say it took me a few months, four months, I was never the starter, mm -hmm. like right at the beginning of the season. So I think that's definitely helped me throughout my journey, just knowing that if I battle and I work work as hard as I can, that and I get my chance in the net, then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give it away. I'll get in the net and then I'm gonna keep it. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of been my mindset throughout the entire thing. Like, obviously, sometimes you're not gonna get your shot right away, but when you get your shot, you gotta take you gotta take that opportunity. And you gotta make the most of it. So Benjamin, growing up just outside of Chicago, I'm sure you know you were there during the uh, Stanley Cup dynasty years. Yeah. Uh, is there any memories that you have from that time frame just growing up around the area that did you go to any of the games maybe did you get to a playoff game who were some of your favorite yeah, players yeah, during yeah, that yeah. run you know we just yeah. go into that time for you yeah I mean I was really like I got to go to actually I think it was uh game six against Tampa in 2015 I got to watch them win the Stanley Cup in Chicago oh. so I think that's for sure my favorite memory like obviously watching all those series in 2010 and 2013 but I think it's got to be that 2015 when they beat Tampa at home. I think that was that was an awesome time because it was I, obviously I was there and there there was nothing better watching my favorite player Patrick Kane score a goal in that game and then I think Duncan Keith scored. I have a great memory of that game and I think that was uh, it was awesome growing up there and then going to those parades after. There's nothing like it. Yeah, for sure. You know, I also want to take you back to the Chicago Mission, which you know I was joking with Rory. I'm like, is it a huge advantage that your jerseys are glow in the dark and can be seen from outer space because they were like they're like neon green if you haven't seen google yeah. chicago mission jerseys they're they're doing pretty wild that well clark's doing it right now there you go but a couple <laughs> of your teammates ended up in the sj obviously thomas wright and and miles gust and and there's been yeah. some guys from the mission that have gone to the sj uh you know over the years it was that all coincidence or i guess what, what was your path rory mentioned kind of going to camp and making it and being good enough to kind of allow the broncos to to trade Tristan Boileau, to get Spencer Bell, and now Spencer Bell is one of the best yeah. players in the league, and you're one of the best goalies in the league, and boy, did yeah. that turn out pretty good. But <laughs> anyways, okay. that's ancient history. Just talk about your, you know, how it is that you were like, I'm going to choose the SJ. Yeah, I think I like Barnes called me in the summer, um, summer going into last year, and I was just going to go play another year at U18s, but I obviously had wanted to play junior to go in that year, and I went to a couple camps before, and nothing, nothing had worked out, and. I got a call from Barnes and he said, you know, we, we really like you and we want you to come up and obviously you're going to have to make the team out of camp and fight for there. And I think that's exactly what I did. I, uh, I took the opportunity to come here and obviously Humboldt's a great place to play. Like there's nowhere else I'd rather be playing juniors now. So I think, um, just, just getting here is definitely, definitely different, but, uh, I love it. I've loved every single second here. And I think that, um, yeah, I think just exactly what you said, like, sort of, like, it wasn't, obviously, wasn't expecting to come to Humboldt, but um, I've been here, and I loved it ever since, and I think it's just sort of been a coincidence with those, with those other guys that played for the Ranj, I think it was sort of, like, the SJ started watching, I think they were maybe at, um, I think it was U18, it's called the Max Tournament in Calgary, mm -hmm. so I think that's sort of where they found some of our guys, and I think it was just a little bit of a coincidence. Well, I mean, and look where it's got you, Ben. You know, committed NCAA Division One Air Force. Obviously, first a huge congratulations, but yeah, thank uh, you. You know, just talk a bit about you know what that means to you. That is not an easy school to get into, first of all, uh, yeah. and just kind of how it how it materialized and uh, just the the thought process on on the choice. Yeah, this is where I want to go. This is where I want to play. 
Yeah, I think it's it's been my dream ever since I started playing hockey to play uh, to play NCAA Division One. So that's been awesome to just being able to almost get that out of the way and now just be able to focus on the team. But like, yeah, like you said, my decision making on that was uh, sort of like they gave me a, a call. I think maybe a couple of weeks after the showcase and said they were they were interested in me, and um, so I knew the the light the light was on me, and I had to perform because I knew they were watching and. I did exactly that, and I got a call, I think, a few weeks ago, maybe three or four weeks ago, and then they offered me a commitment. I, there's no way I can turn that down. It's an amazing school, um, great academics, and it's a great, great, great facilities, great hockey team. So I think I'm really excited to go there in the next couple of years. And obviously, it's it's definitely going to be a change. Like yeah. I'll, I'll have to join the Air Force for five years after, but... I think that's something that um, I'm willing to do, and I think it'll be a very cool experience. Yeah, you know, it, it's absolutely awesome. Did you know the elevation's at 6,000 feet, and that's where you're going to have to play at? Like, it, do you have experience yeah, with that? Yeah, they did tell me that. They did say that's that's definitely a fact, and you're going to have to get used to that. So I think I got to get on the treadmill right now, <laughs> and start getting used to that. Well, that's, you know, that's fun, because we're going to go into rapid fire now. So I got a few quick questions. Okay. Um, and again, maybe people don't know this, but you put in a lot of work in the off season. You actually lost, you know, a good amount of weight. You worked on, you mm -hmm. know, exercise, diet and everything. Uh, how much weight did you lose to get into the shape you are in now? And what was the one thing that you couldn't eat that you missed the most? Um, I think I lost almost 40 pounds. And... One thing I couldn't eat that I missed the most when I was on a diet was probably, oof, that's a good question, maybe just like a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch or something. <laughs> Sugary cereal. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. That. yeah. I feel, I feel you know, that, yeah. that. That's crazy off season, you know, 40 pounds. Uh, Humble Broncos, of course, do the, the best save of the game, post on social media after every yeah. game. Uh, of course, with you playing 40 games, it's often you. So uh, do you have yeah. one save this year that's like, yeah, that's my favorite? Um, I think my favorite's probably got to be that one against Kindersley that got highlighted of the week, I think, a while back. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was a slide across blocker save in the third period. I think we were up 2-1, to one and I think that kept us in the game, so I think it's got to be that one. Okay, going in transition, talking about saves. Of course, your coach is a former NHL player. Uh, yeah. Who's got the better of one another? Does he often tuck one by you, or are you, are you taking them away from him? Yeah, so we play, we play a lot of rebound after practice, and I got to give it to him. He can, he can score pretty, pretty well. I think it's about even. I'd like to say it's about even, but uh, <laughs> he's got a really accurate shot. Yeah. Sometimes he gets the best of me, so I got to give it to him. Would you put Chicago deep dish pizza over any other pizza? Oof. Mm, I don't think so. I think I really like it. I really do like it. I think it's sort of like a once a month thing. You can't have too much or you're going to be, you're going to be in a coma. For <laughs> it's, just so, it's just so big. But I think like a New York style pizza is just way easier and way easier to eat. Chicago style is more like a lasagna. But I, it is really <laughs> Of course, you're going to Air Force. You know, on a scale of one to 10, how, uh, how would you compare your fighter pilot skills to say, uh, you know, Top Gun? <laughs> And Maverick. Oh. I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have to say a one. Uh, maybe I can get it up there when I get there. And I just got one for my sake. Last one for rapid fire for me. So I often have my like pregame kind of system and I'll go into Skip's room and I'll grab a couple waters yeah. for the broadcast. It often coincides with the same time that you are, uh, yeah. you know, in the hallway, you know, bouncing the ball and, and kind of getting focused. When I say something to you, does it throw you off at all? Because I won't say anything no. to you <laughs> if that's the case. No, no, it does not. It's sort of, it's honestly sort of a part of my home game routine now. So okay, I, good, uh, good, good, good. Go. <laughs> that's good. One for me. We like to, we like yeah. to throw this at guys. Uh, we happen to have your broadcaster close by, so we were wondering if you could do a your Rory <laughs> McGoran <laughs> impression. Oh. Whew. Um, let me pick one here. I got a few. I'm gonna have to go. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, Matthew Van Blair, calm down on a breakaway. He shoots, he scores. <laughs> MVB with another goal on the year. There you Something go. Like well that. done. That's, bad. That's not hey, bad. Hey, we like the most like recognizable broadcaster in the league probably is the Flynn Flon guy, Rob Hart, and none of their players will do an impression for us. Yeah, and I'm like kind of angry about it. Ground so the fact bit. that I threw that at you and you did it. 
You get mega points. I'm not even that impressionable. Thank you. So, <laughs> That's so it's the dog and pony show. I appreciate it. I yeah. do. I do. I do. At the beginning of the broadcast, go. So let's saddle up the horses. Like that's how I go mm. in. You know, in, into the game after my. But you intro, see, Benjamin but... wouldn't hear that because no, he's he would on the ice. Yeah, he's on the ice. <laughs> yeah, he's got a little seat in his head. <laughs> Anyways, Benjamin, thanks so much for joining us today. Congrats again on the Air Force commitment, and uh, good luck the rest of the way in the playoffs, buddy. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, and that's Benjamin Motu of the Humble Broncos with. A Rory McGoran impression. Not Love bad. It. All right. Uh, when we come back from our second break here, we are going to get into a few fun things. So stick around, and we'll be right back. The Chevrolet Silverado 1500. Advanced power and capability to tackle the long hauls. Style to make a statement on the streets. Visit ChevroletOffers.ca to learn more. Increase your home comfort with high-efficiency natural gas equipment. Sask Energy offers rebates so you can lower your energy use and save money. For a list of rebates, contact a participating network member or visit saskenergy.com. When you buy a lottery ticket in Saskatchewan, your money really goes a long way. More than 12,000 sport, culture, and recreation groups receive funding from Sask Lotteries every year. Everyone wins. Thanks for helping me out and trying to protect me today. It's the kind of thing that, you know, somebody comes out who's not, not ready, not prepared, and put into an awkward situation without um, somebody taking leadership and saying, hey, I'm gonna protect you. Um, it's going to shorten people's careers, and um, and that, that's a, a big reason why we exist, and uh, you know what drives us to uh, do what we do. They know how important their role is in the community, being a good leader. Um, you know, showing kids that there's there is a, a right and a wrong way to do things, and and leading the right way, uh, being a positive role model to uh, not just kids in the community, but anybody in the community. You know, Coach said a lot of great things that um, are really consistent with the values that we have at the SCSA, and you know, respect, respect for. Uh, those around us, respect for uh, those that, that we work side by side with. Leadership and part of that is being being innovative and collaborative and solving problems together. Really the last one that you, you touched on was integrity. Doing what's right and doing it the right way and those things just yield incredible results not just in terms of making things safe but, but really being productive and striving uh, uh, whether it be you know in a game or in your life or in your business. I think absolutely we try and fill the roles of all those values and just try to be the best people we can really, not only for ourselves but for our teammates and for the community around us. Have a lot of fun today. Thanks guys. You're very welcome. Thank you. Original 16. Celebrate things done well. Saskatchewan's far north is where the land itself inspires. It's the beauty and power of wilderness, the solitude of a place far removed from what you might know. When this landscape surrounds you, it's like nothing else. Come and let it awaken you, energize you. Come and create your story in our northern lights and waterways. Saskatchewan. Welcome back inside SJHL Weekly. Uh, I'm laughing because uh, we're talking about our fantasy pool that Jamie's going to update in just a second. And he just didn't 
didn't do my team. <laughs> did not Because it doesn't matter. Just my team doesn't matter. matter. You or uh, Jeremy, no yeah. point. <laughs> doesn't matter. You guys were in a distant third and fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that distant. If I was, you either uh, win or you're the loser. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think that's what the saying is. Uh, just, before, <laughs> just before we head into that, let's just have a quick look at the stat leaders from our first two games of the playoffs here, because there were some guys who put up some big numbers. Alexi Silvestri, six points. He leads the way for the Flin Flon Bombers. We talked about Aiden Hutchinson a lot. We talked about Kean Bell a lot. We didn't talk much about Matthew Van Blaircom outside of your impression from Benjamin Motu, right. uh, so, mm -hmm. which is very good. Uh, Alexander Papasparopoulos, we talked about him a little bit there. A little kudos to him for a big game in game two. And Noah Houle, obviously, leading the way. And we, you know, we mentioned these other guys as well. Kaufman, Vockler, Constantino, Duguay. Uh, guys, did anybody um, stand out, I guess? Let's just go, quickly go into that. Did any of these guys stand out specifically to you in the first couple of games? Um, you know what? Again, he was on my all underrated team, right? But yeah, Aiden Hutchinson, unreal. Right? Is that gonna be your guy too, Newsy? We get oh, a, I can go get a, a different ditto. direction. We got ditto fine. on that. Um, you know, he's he's a premier talent. Ugh. Like he's he's really good. And uh, you know, when we talked about when Melfort was in a little bit of an injury issue, he was always the guy that just needed to step up. That he was injured for a little bit as well. But uh, you know, among the top five in SJHL scoring and. Yeah. You know, I don't know, he won a lot of the best in the league, but he would be the one five points, and two, four goals in two, in yeah. two games. Yeah, both he and Silvestri had hat tricks. Silvestri had a first period hat trick, yeah. and uh, he said on the post game interview there with the Flynn Flynn Bombers, uh, Austin Mattis asked him, Have you ever had a scored a hat trick in one period? And he said, No, I never done that. So <laughs> there you go. Bemidji State, you're getting a good hockey player. Yeah. Um, Alex Papasparopoulos, same series there. He said Melford and Estevan, obviously. Uh, gritty kid, you know, we always talk about kids from the OJ. Are they going to be tough? What are they going to be like? Yada, yada. He obviously has Centennial Cup experience. Played for Pickering at the Centennial Cup when it was in Estevan. Mm. So obviously made that connection. But uh, he was gritty, really good on the penalty kill as well. And, yeah, huge, obviously, with Keegan Little either out with the suspension or getting back up to speed. And Zach Perfect not 100%. Talk about a guy that needs to create offensively, Alex Papasparopoulos. Uh, it was wonderful for us to end the two games. And he listened to me talk about my OJ career for about like an hour on the bus on the way to the game. <laughs> yeah. So kudos to him and Rain Hodge for there sitting go. there listening to me gab for about an hour on the How way. How many times did they like try to signal it by like almost getting their headphones in their ear? Like, oh, no, no. <laughs> can you they, keep it? They like, were oh, asking oh, me, oh, they were asking me <laughs> questions. So <laughs> they were they were really nice. That's good. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. yeah, a couple good kids there for sure. Uh, just a quick note, Connor Brading is asking, uh, he can't seem to get his vote through for Joey Lee's uh, for the RBC Community Ambassador. So, well, you know what, Connor? We're not, I, don't, I don't. I can't answer your question yeah. as to why. I it's think not you're working. allowed one vote a day, is my guess. Yeah. For so that could be something there, but we'll have a look into that for you, just for you, uh, just so you know. Uh, Newsy will do it though. <laughs> <laughs> sure. uh, it's quiz time, gentlemen. Uh, sure. We're going to go over some questions here that we came up with before the show, uh, and I think there are some fun ones here. So we'll start it off with: Will there be? Two or more sweeps, series sweeps. In, I'm, I'm going to say round one. We're just talking about round one here, obviously. Uh, two or more. So that means uh, if you're saying one or less, that you're saying no to this question. So two or more. Jamie, let's start over mm. you, on your side. Well, I think there will be. I think there will be one sweep. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say, less, gonna say less, less, than. less than two. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I'll, I'll say two. I'll say two. We got all four series in a two and zero, oh, so I got as good of a shot as I ever could, yeah. uh, to, to having more than one. Sure. Uh, and let's go with yes, I think yeah, there'll be two. It is, it is set up that yeah. this could go all sorts of ways. Yeah. Uh, I just have a feeling that all these bo the bottom four teams who are down right now are all going to find a way to squeak one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say zero. One okay. or more, you mean? One game. Like, yeah. They're going to sneak one game, yeah. all of them yeah. at least. Yeah. So I'm going to say zero. 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 Okay. Okay. Gotcha, I'm just going to gotcha. say zero. Okay. I'm in the business of selling tickets here, gentlemen. Smart. <laughs> uh, anyways, which lower seed right now, down to nothing, feels the best? And Rory, I'll start with you on this one. It's feels cool. the best. It's so they're down to nothing, they're losing, but which one feels the best going into game three? It's a close tie. A Melville, I'll, I'll just by, by a hint, because those games, really with a power play goal, um, you know, that high stick being two centimeters mm -hmm. lower, yeah. right? Like, they could have won one of those games. Yeah. And they haven't been to the playoffs since 2016 or seven. Like, it's a long, yeah. long time. Uh, we saw the building at the game of the month, one of the final games of the year, absolutely rocking. I can't wait for the excitement of the fans in Melville. I'll say Melville. Yeah. I'm going to say Estevan. Yeah, that was my Couple other one. Couple reasons. Yeah. They played great in the third period. They put three goals past James Venn in the third period in that game, too. So they played great last time we saw them. Uh, and then also... 
Last year, against Flynn Fon, they went down 2 nothing. lost two games at the Whitney Forum, game, round one, then won three in a row. So, and then they have all those, they have five guys who played Centennial uh, year. They have nine guys back from the playoffs last year. There's lots of experience. Keegan Little's back. He looks really good. Uh, so I'm going to say yes to me. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Weyburn, uh, mm -hmm. and only because they've just played so good at home. Yeah. And that crowd in mm -hmm. Weyburn, I've been a part of the Estevan Weyburn series on the Estevan side of things. Yeah, They're not very nice. No. Uh, in Weber. They'll, so. they'll get under your skin. Yeah, yeah. They'll, uh, they, they know what they're doing. And the booze they will be flowing. <laughs> <laughs> they know what they're doing. So I'll say Weyburn just because, you know, they, that home rink is so good for them. Uh, after seeing two games, who do you guys think is going to be the breakout star of the overall playoffs? Which player maybe is coming out from underneath some, the spotlight of some of the other players who's going to be the standout at the end of it all? Yeah, that's exact. Uh, Boris Kaufman for me for the Humboldt Broncos because of that reason. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the new ones, the Bell, the Bryson, the Van Blaircom, sure. right? Veterans like Amaral, Weagle. Uh, Kaufman's only played 21 games in the regular season, too, mm -hmm. prior to the deadline. Mm -hmm. uh, 17 points in 21 games. Now he's got four points in two games. He's got all the skill, can play a physical brand of hockey, really working with Matthew Van Blaircom and Maddox Amaral now. And. You know, he's not going to get the top pairing, I don't think, for a lot of the games. It's going to go to the Bryson, Bell, and Newins line. Mm -hmm. So Boris Kaufman, I think, can really have a breakout playoffs well over a point per game and be a leading factor of that secondary wave of scoring for Humboldt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take it a slightly different direction and say that we saw a totally different Logan Cunningham mm -hmm. than we saw a lot in that there for Battlefords. You know, I think two games, he was great. He was great for the last three games of the regular season. Also, Battlefords went on that run, and they said he has that experience. He's a big kid. Um, and obviously Battlefords is looking to play a lot better than they have uh, as a whole team in front of him. So uh, I'm going to go with Logan That's Cunningham. a good pick. Yeah. I'll say Braden Sinclair. Not that he didn't have a good regular season. I just think that uh, Humble or Humble, no, Battlefords, yeah. uh, over the course of the uh, playoffs is going to need to find some other people to step up and, and mm -hmm. put up some big points. I'm just going to say Braden Sinclair, mm -hmm. I think, is going to have a nice playoffs by the end of it all. Sure. Um, as we move along here, how many shutouts, because he already has two, <laughs> How many shutouts will Harmon Laserhume end up with? This is an open-ended question. You wow. can answer any number, but he's already got two, so don't say one or zero. Well, look, it. I mean, <laughs> if you win the championship, you got to win 16 games. So yeah. how many, if you think first they're going to win the championship, yeah. uh, it's at least 16 chances, because a shutout would equal a win as well, at least mm -hmm. 16 chances that he has to get a shutout. Uh, I don't think he'll get three. I think he'll get one more. Yeah. Well, one more. It's, it's tough. Well, it's Kote tough. had three last year. Three, yeah, yeah, three. And they they bashed their way to the championship. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you said two. Yeah, I, I think I think probably three is the smart well, one answer. One more? But I'm going to say four. Two more. Oh, nice. I'm going to say two more just because, as I said, there's already got two. And two games. That's got, a whole round. That's, yeah. a, that's, getting, uh, that's a win uh, no. of a round of well, shutouts. I'd say yeah. how many guys ever get playoff shutouts in their lives. Yeah, that's Forget yeah. about yeah. That's two. Fair. But I'd say, I'd say four. I'll say four. Cool. I'm going to go all out and say five. Five. Okay. I'm going to say five. <laughs> uh, go Harmon Laser Human. And you guys are just underrating him. He just continues to be underrated <laughs> all yeah. season long. Um. <laughs> if, if, if they get through the Kindersley Clippers, which is still yet to be told, it's going into Kindersley, where that's the only building that Kindersley won against the Flint Flon Bombers mm -hmm. in, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to have to go up against the likes of, you know, I'm just saying, if all the top four teams close out their 2-0 series lead against yeah. really high-powered offenses in Humboldt, Battleford, and Melford down the stretch, right? So, Absolutely. Uh, it's going to be tough to, Not to find be shutouts. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. But possible, yeah. So the final one, and we kind of a little bit already touched on this, but which rink gives the teams that are currently down 2-0 the biggest advantage heading back for game threes and games three and four. So we're talking, uh, we're yeah, talking yeah. Melville, mm -hmm. Weyburn, Estevan, Kindersley. Which rink gives the biggest advantage to those? This teams? is a wild question because I think every, obviously every yeah. rink does, but yeah. they're all different reasons. And we kind of hinted at that before. I'll give the slight edge to Affinity Place. Estevan has won a championship in that building before. Recently. They recently, yes. They play very, very good defensively in that building. I think that's what they're going to have to do. Uh, a big, loud arena when the fans get up and show themselves. Uh, I'll take Affinity Place. Yeah. Yeah, and like kind of the reverse again of the, the, a similar question that we asked earlier. But yeah, I'm going to go with Melville. Uh, they were 10 games above 500, uh, you know, at, at the CN Community Center this year where the Melville Millionaires, as we keep saying, it was bouncing at the South Cal Game of the Month uh, recently. So... Uh, and again, they didn't. They didn't necessarily get outplayed by Battlefords, and that's what you expect in a four-five as well. 
Um, but, you know, I, it was very, very close between Bathford's and Melville in those first two games. Then you throw home ice advantage in uh, there for Melville where it was bumping. And that community, they haven't seen playoff hockey in a while. You know there's going to be a real outpouring of emotion. Um, you know, they haven't had playoff hockey since 2018 in Melville. So there's going to be a big outpouring of emotion. Uh, and it'll be very interesting to see. Obviously, Kindersley, they haven't seen playoff hockey since 2019 mm -hmm. also, so that'll be interesting. But, uh, but Melville, you know, lots of belief in their team. They love Doug Johnson yeah. in there too. So I think uh, I'm going to go with Melville. Yeah, shout out to Melville and Kindersley for yeah. those crowds that are going to see some. They're going to be in it. I think those crowds are going to yeah. be a big factor. So. I'm going to go back to Weyburn again and just the history that's in that building. And Rory, I think you said in the preview show that uh, Humboldt and Weyburn, they don't mix well in that rink, if I remember no. correctly. <laughs> Wild games. <laughs> yeah. like bounces and just weird yeah. things happen. So I'm yeah. going to say yeah. the the, uh, the the juju of the rink, the yeah. old-fashioned rink in Weyburn, I think. Glass gonna, broke one time. Yeah. The Zamboni yeah. malfunction and, and, one and, time. It's just weird things And happening. Weyburn's power play at the Crescent yeah, Point good. place is 28% yeah. Yeah. this year. 28%. 28%. So I'll that's go with disgusting. Weyburn for that one. I think that's a fun question. Don't take though. penalties, Humboldt. You'll be in trouble. Yeah, yeah, I think they all have their own unique little yeah. bits and pieces for sure. Um, let's just bring up, if we can bring up that bracket from earlier in the show, guys. I, I'm, I'm sorry to throw this at you, but... Uh, games three go tomorrow on Tuesday. Games four go all on Wednesday. Uh, so if we can bring up that bracket uh, one more time. Perfect. They also fell asleep during Nukes and Notes. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I went fast, okay? You did. You did. You didn't do too bad. But as you can see again, all four top four seeds lead 2-0. Uh, all of the games uh, kick off. Three of them at 7 o'clock. Uh, one of them at 7.30 tomorrow night, Tuesday night. Um, and Wednesday night, very similar schedule. They're all back on the ice for the back-to-backs there. So I guess just as we go into games three and four, what are you guys keeping an eye on as we get into these? Uh, these could be pivotal games already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm obviously the broadcaster for the Hubble Broncos, but uh, aside from that game, uh, as Nunji said just a couple seconds ago, really happy and excited for Kindersley and Melville. Look, it, you're, you're never out of a series until you lose at home, right? And, we think. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> and they got their first taste of playoff hockey in six and seven years, respectively. So really pumped for those two buildings in Kindersley and Melville for getting sure. to experience that. Yeah, absolutely. Jamie, mm -hmm. anything standing out right now? Yeah, just just similar. Just happy for communities that have that, that are desperate for playoff hockey. Clayton Jardine has kind of done such a nice job. Doug Johnson's done such a nice job, kind of revitalizing those communities and and those organizations and bringing them to you know places where they are now. And um, you know whatever whatever happens, it, it's a big win for both of those uh, organizations because they've set a foundation yep. uh, for the future. So Definitely. you know, really excited, and I'm really excited uh, to call a game tomorrow with Clark on Flow Hockey and Estevan. Boy, oh boy, I'm so honored uh, to call uh, Estevan Bruins playoff hockey. It's been such a treat. Yeah, I was so gonna say, far. the yeah. three of us are invading the Southeast. Like yeah. we're, we are yeah. going, Rory's gonna be in Weyburn both nights, obviously yeah. calling the games. Jamie's gonna be in Estevan both nights. I'm splitting my time between the two towns. So I'm excited yeah. to get down there uh, and see some of these uh, games in action and some of these crowds and uh, it should be a lot of fun. If you see us, say hello. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, even if even if we're up Bring in the booth, candy. yeah, just throw candy, candy at Jamie from yeah. up in the booth. <laughs> yeah. Always. Yeah, it's just throw candy at Jamie from down below while he's up in the booth. I think that he would probably be, be yeah, fine. Yeah, we're not with like that. we're not like uh, you know some goalies. We're like like Ben Motu. You, you, you can talk to him before. Just you talk, talk to him. Yeah, 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 we're yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. especially um, if you have candy. Yeah, I'll be walking around <laughs> as well during the pregame and stuff, chatting with some people in Estevan specifically, obviously with me having a little history there. And then in Weyburn, it should be fun to see some people as well. So mm -hmm. I'm excited. Uh, but if you if you can't get to the rinks, again, I, I always say this, what are you doing? Get to the rinks. Uh, I'm sure that there's still tickets available in all the communities, so get out there. But if you can't, make sure you get your Flow Hockey subscription so you can watch all the games online. Uh, and also follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, X. Uh, Instagram and TikTok, as well as YouTube, which you may be watching right now on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Hit like, share, comment, all those things right now before the end of the show. That gives us a huge boost uh, on our social media platforms. Uh, so make sure you follow us everywhere and get your Flow Hockey subscription to follow all of the action. We have pre-game and post-game recaps from our boy Jacob Faith. He's going to be on the road. I can't remember where he said he's going to be this week. Somewhere. I think he's going to be Not in Kindersley. Not Humboldt or Battleford, because no. he just was. So. Yes, he's going to be in Somewhere. Kindersley, I think, for one of them. So make sure you say hi to Jacob Faith if you see him, but he's going to be uh, doing his pre- and post-game videos. we got graphics going up all the time with recaps and information for everybody. Uh, stuff going up on the website, sjhl.ca. 
we got you covered. We got you covered, folks. Um, and another shout out to our big sponsors as well. UPL, of course, the presenting sponsor of this broadcast and all of the playoffs in the SJHL. So shout out to them. Uh, Borgo, Cantera Seeds, Capital Automall, Chevrolet, Great Western, Nutrient, RBC, Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association, Sask Lotteries, Tourism Saskatchewan, Sask Energy, SGEU, and SGI. Uh, SJHL Insider is on Thursday. Jamie and I, Jamie's going to join me uh, on the set. We're going to recap games three and four and set you up for games five and six. Uh, and then Monday, we'll be all three back here to potentially recap some series, uh, finishing, maybe give some previews to potentially to some future series. Uh, and we'll get you the schedules and everything depending on how this week all goes. Or preview down. game seven. Preview game seven. Which would be the Tuesday. Would be the Next Tuesday. Tuesday. Would be the Tuesday yes, for, yes, for any game, game sevens yeah. that will take place. It'll yeah. all be on the Tuesday. So we might have a few of those previews for you. Who knows? I mean, there's just so much that can happen. So make sure you're following along everywhere. Rory, Jamie, guys in the back, Bryce and Jordan, whoever else is back there today. I'm not fully sure who all is back there today. Uh, and everyone here at IKS, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And, uh, and just enjoy the hockey, guys. It's going to be a great week.